When you look at the moon, what do you see between your eyes and the moon? The space in between is not seen. Similarly, your own light through which you look is also not seen. They are one and the same. Your consciousness is of the nature of space. The creation in descending order is as follows. First comes the seed consciousness, that is, the feeling I am. Then space, followed by the other four elements. This is the sequence. The one who has realized their own consciousness, its cause and its duration, is the knower. They do not act. When the king is seated on the throne, the administration goes on, just because he is. In the same way, the knower does not act. Along with birth, the feeling, I am, arises. Before birth, there was no such feeling. The vital energy carries out all the actions. The knower is beyond the known. The knower means the Supreme Self or the Param Atman, who is prior to consciousness. It is the unmanifested state. It is the true nature of everyone. One who has realized this state is called a jnani. The ignorant person takes the feeling I am as the body. The seeker takes it as pure consciousness. But the jnani does not identify with anything. After listening to this, compare it with your present state of being. There was no concept before birth, but an internal, peaceful reality. The concept I am comes through the power of the Sattva Guna.
because of ignorance, one apparently enjoys body consciousness. A seeker enjoys it as knowledge. The knower is beyond knowledge. A realized one is beyond that enjoyment altogether. To surrender means to be without body consciousness, to offer everything to Brahman means to be without quality. Act with the conviction that the consciousness that sustains the universe is within your own body. On your own you are unable to do anything. All the actions are carried out by the life force. Who is talking? Is it me that is talking? Is it you that is talking? The word belongs to space. And you are beyond space. My guru used to say, no matter how old you are, you are only a child. The body gets older, yet consciousness is always in the present moment. It is like a newborn child at all times. Consciousness can observe only that which undergoes change. That which is eternal cannot be observed by consciousness. Therefore, it cannot be known. The concept, I am so and so, is not permanent. One who knows this is everlasting. Concepts and desires appear with the body and also disappear with the body. All that is known is a concept. However great the knower of the self may be, what they teach is still a concept that pleases. All your actions are transient. It does not matter how long they last. What is today, not a trace of it will remain tomorrow as nothing. Mm -hmm. 
is everlasting. What will you do when the mind flow stops? The one who knows what they are will never censor anyone. The world is bound by the three gunas. One who knows the gunas does not censor the gunas. So long as you consider yourself a body with a name there is no direct knowledge of the self. Without that, one becomes a tattler who blames things on someone else. All wordy attacks are the result of body consciousness. The feeling I am, which everyone has, is God. So whom will you criticize? The feeling that you are is the soul of the world. Remember this constantly. Put aside what you have learnt from books. As long as you think you are separate, you have to do sadhana, spiritual practice. Whatever happens or does not happen is within God and by God. You are not concerned with that. To keep this awareness throughout the day is constant meditation on the self. Your consciousness contains the immense, phenomenal world. Yet, it appears outside. As it is created from this subtle consciousness, it is untrue. Only Brahman is true. Hold tight to that knowledge. That is true meditation. As long as you look for personal benefit, you will not get self-realization. Atman is our true nature. It is the formless consciousness. With the combination of body, prana and atman, there is a sense, I am. 
put aside your problems, if any, and get stabilised in the self. The body has a form, but consciousness within the body has no form. By taking the body as our form, duality is created. It brings the experience of happiness and misery. Worship only consciousness by which all of this is experienced. It is beyond intellect. Where there is an experience of the self, there is bliss. We are that bliss. Consciousness is the hum of beingness. To catch hold of it is meditation. People say they are happy. But has any one of them experienced bliss? Our true nature is neither happiness nor sorrow. The self itself is happiness. I am is beyond the mind. It is also beyond the qualities. Its nature is like space. It is the all-pervading firmament of consciousness. It is fearless, just as space is fearless. It is stupendous and fathomless. Keep your attention on it. Worship it without bringing in duality. Worship your own consciousness. Do not identify with the body. You are the ocean of bliss. Worship the word of the Guru. I am not the body. I am the formless, pure life force or Brahman that vitalizes the body. There is no limit to happiness 
where there is no body consciousness. Consciousness will sustain you in every sense if you have faith in the Guru's word. When your inner urge is devotion to the Guru, death has no effect on you. Consciousness appears in various forms including different types of visions. Do not take yourself to be an individual. Stay with the awareness of the manifest totality, its body is space. Take these words to your heart, it will enable you to see and experience clearly the seed within. That seed has become the world. Though it moves about in myriad bodies, it is spotless. Hence, you need not worry about the purification of the body. You do not require rules and regulations of any creed. Your consciousness will slowly crystallize and you will realize your true nature. The concept of death will seem ridiculous. The true religion of a devotee is faith. Strictly observe my word. I have no other form but consciousness. Then do what you like. Do not worry. It is a waste of intellect and energy. Spontaneously, everything is happening in God, through God, and by God.
observe your present life, how and why it has become like this. Know that this is a temporary show. You call upon God, but where was God before you came to know you are? Find the source of all this. That which is of the nature of time is not everlasting because time itself is not real. Your intellect also changes with time. The manifest is bound by time. Gods and deities are a result of the power of the word. We are alive by virtue of the word. The pulse itself is the word. Whatever you believe in is true for you. However, it is time bound and not eternal. The truth is unmanifested. The manifestation is a time bound concept. Our body-mind is part of it. Meditate on that by which you know you are. Birth and death a nonsense. Who is born? It is only a sport of the five elements. The vital life force is playing as it pleases by collecting and mixing the five elements in the form of a body. They have no intelligence. The world is there due to duality. No duality, no world. As consciousness, you are prior to space. Before going to sleep, at least say, I am of the nature of space. This knowledge is beyond words. It cannot be acquired through austerities or japa.
Most people get involved in rituals and various methods of search. As a result, they may get visions and feel satisfied. Self-knowledge, though, is beyond concepts. It is beyond words. It is eternal. Keep listening until you have no doubt about your identity as to what you are and how you have come into existence. Faith in the Guru and devotion to the Guru spontaneously brings the understanding The knowledge, once acquired, can never be lost. Krishna taught the ultimate knowledge, how the universe appears and disappears, while the unmanifest remains. This knowledge is not affected by words. When the manifest withdraws into the unmanifest, samadhi ensues. One wants meaning to the words, but this knowledge is beyond words. How the wordless state is has to be explained in words. All doubts have to be eradicated. Worldly knowledge is of no use. When listened to, this knowledge grows by itself, becomes all-pervading and in the end merges into the Absolute. It is pleased with devotion to the Guru and the love for the Guru. The listener should be of a pure heart. You get happiness only when you forget yourself. All other activities are entertainment.
The love for the Sadguru is not an ordinary thing. Always remember that our consciousness is in accordance with the Guru's word. Keep this firmly in mind that is meditation. When the meaning of these words sprout in you, you go beyond everything. You understand how the temporary consciousness merges into the eternal state of your own nature of the Absolute. With faith in my words, all will be explained. Simple devotees will get liberated sooner than the intellectuals. If there is fear of death at the last moment, such a devotee calls upon God, forgets himself, and gets dissolved into the universal consciousness. Prana leaves, and then there is no rebirth. The intellectual devotee becomes involved in concepts and is born again according to their last concept. How can that which has no beginning and no end be conceptualized? Nevertheless, people keep on doing some practices and rituals according to their own concepts. People have to do this as they cannot keep quiet. Krishna says, your consciousness through all the five senses is protecting you. It is my own manifestation. Accept consciousness as the guru and worship it. It sustains all the bodies. It has no form of its own. It is self-luminous. It has come over you uninvited. The bliss from his consciousness 
has no match in material happiness. It gives sustenance to innumerable beings. It is pleased with love. It is a devotee of love. The flavor of your beingness is the love. The sense I am is the love. Remember its worthiness. The scriptures describe its greatness. It dwells in your heart. It will offer you enlightenment, perfection, and you will be bliss yourself. Without it, the tongue does not know taste. When this tiny consciousness leaves, people say the person is dead. That which is self-sensing, which is your own beingness, is within you. It is blissful. It is inside you. Without it, there cannot be any witnessing. It is the holy feet of Sri Guru. It is the life force. It has the flavor of self-love. Your true state precedes the five elements, the sun and the moon. Scriptures never get tired of praising it. It is microscopic. It nourishes and protects the body. Take refuge at its feet, as it is your own true nature. This is the Guru's word. It is through this that you will be liberated. After getting liberation, you may behave in any way you like. The dream is untrue, so too the wakefulness is false. 
There is no difference between them. They happen spontaneously. Our talk is also happening in a dream. You know that you are. What is the reason for this? Deliberate on this. You must practice meditation and listening. With sharp intellect, one gets liberated in a short period of time just by listening. First, think through these things and then remain in a thoughtless state. Do not become a slave of your own thoughts. One who has reached the stage where there is no thought will not have to do anything for their sustenance, for their protection. Whatever experience they have in the world, there is no doer. Everything happens spontaneously. Space is everywhere, but consciousness is prior to space. The light of consciousness is space. You will experience its vastness when your body consciousness goes. The flavour of your beingness is the holy presence of God. The concern about the individual self can be compared to a snake bite. Sages do not consider themselves as the body, so they are not bitten. The self is beyond light and darkness. Only the body or the mind gets stained. Bhagawan means light. The light of Bhagawan is a big void of light. Is there a difference between that light and your own light? When you know your consciousness and become a witness, you will understand that the sky is your light. There is nothing beyond the light of God. The natural quality of God is your own consciousness. Does this light see any difference between a man and a woman? All this, one and all, in its totality, is consciousness. That taste or knowledge of self-existence is Bhagawan. To understand this, 
means to see God in every living being. Forget that you are a human being. Your light is the light of Bhagawan. In all that appears, what is the underlying luminous source? It is this light alone. It is present even in a stone, but it is prominently expressed in you. The enlightened devotee says, I am not the body. Then who is it that becomes enlightened? When a person becomes realized, they no longer consider themselves a body. Then who says, I have become realized? In other words, there is no one who has become enlightened. There is neither knower nor known. No one is born, no one dies. Nothing has happened. The experience can be described in many ways, but the experiencer cannot be described. When words are silent, there is no sense in enumerating the divine names. Sage means our own pure, ever-present, true nature. There is no personality there. The sage is not a person. They are alone. They signify a state of permanent satsang, holy association. When you become unattached, compassion will flow through you. All undesirable things will vanish. To become unattached 
means you exist as the Absolute. In such company, others also get peace. Such a one knows how the world is created. Ego means identification with the body. When that goes, purposeful behaviour also vanishes. The worship of such sages uplifts even the deities. And God is indebted to the devotee as they become free from the body. To get rid of the body while one is alive is the most difficult task. Consciousness in the body is God. <laughs> 